Shalom, Shalom, in the bottom of the page. Okay, I'm sorry that the video quality is low, but that is, um, I'll try and deal with it today. I have nothing else to do, so I'll try and do that. <laughs> okay. Um, so we said something very, very interesting on Thursday. The topic was Rav's statement. Rav made a statement, <clears throat> quoted by Rav Himnuna and Barav Huna, and he basically said like this, if a person is, <clears throat> was moide that he, excuse me, if a person not moide, a person lied about the money, not about to to ganav, other things, for example, the person said, the money you have by me was lost, okay? <clears throat> Or he never gave me money. And at the end of the day, Adim came and the Adim said, Yes, he lied. He lied, he lied, he lied through his teeth. It was Nishma Shekel. So, because originally we believed this Shavua, we say that the case is closed. And even though Adim came later, in that case that Adim came, we say that he does not have to pay. Not everyone agrees with Rav. We saw that actually Rav Nachman doesn't agree with him and Rav Nachman Berman Yumi. And La Locha, most Rishonim say not like Rav, but this is Rav's opinion. Explains the Chazonish why. And we need to understand the Chazonish before we continue. The Chazonish says as follows. When the person was believed in Beis Din, then it's a case closed. We believed him, we believed his Shavua that this was the case. So in this particular case, when Adim came, we don't reopen the file, so to speak. We don't reopen the case. He believes that there's a Kosovo, obviously. He learns it from the Psukim. Yeah, we learned the Psukim differently, but he believes that that's the message of the Torah. The Din Torah is that once believed, then you can't tell the Adim, I mean, we don't listen anymore to other Adios. But Shein can, if the person himself admitted, if the person himself came and he cried with big tears and said, oh, he, 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 I really lied, I really was Nishbal Sheker, and yes, he, the Pekodin is by me, then do we believe him? Yes, as is before in the Torah. Why? Because there, the way I understand it, and by the way, what I'm telling you now is not just a sikum, will under, make you understand better what we say later on today. Why is that? The way I understood it was that Hoido is not the court case. Hoido is his own uh, uh, decision. I want to come clean. This is not something enforced by Beisdin. When he says, I want to come clean and I want to admit that I did the wrong thing, then we listen to him. We listen to him and eventually we'll also enforce it on him. Yeah, if you said you have to pay, we will make sure you pay. But this is, him opening the case, it's him saying that I did wrong. And we mail it to his own hoido, we listen because we close the case as far as we're concerned. As far as you're concerned, you still have the chance to repent and then you can still give back the money. And another exception to the rule is Tontan Ganav. Tontan Ganav, which we saw later, and Tontan Ganav will be the star of the show today. You should know Tontan Ganav means already. I'm not going to translate it every time again and again. My wife takes money for translation, you know, and I sometimes help her. So it's going to cost you money for translate every word 10 times. Yeah? So uh, the, the meter, you know, uh, keeps uh, working. So basically, Toyin, Toyin is gone of his who? <clears throat> a person who's a shoymer. Correctly, Yosef said, is a shomer chinam. A shomer chinam would be exempt if in case of Gneva. And this guy says that shoymer, once confronted by the owner, he says, it was stolen from me, and I swear in the name of God that this was stolen from me. And then at the end of the day, they found out that there was no gun whatsoever, and he's a, what I call, a verbal thief. Then how much does he have to pay? Kaifel, he has to pay kaifel. In other words, just like the regular thief has to pay kaifel, so too the verbal thief who, co who cooked up a story that there was theft while there wasn't, he has to pay... <laughs> Instead of the imaginary Ganev in his imagination, he has to pay for that because he's a Ganev, as Rashi explains. In that case also, even if Adim came, even if Adim came, Rav admits that you have to pay Kefal. Why? Because that's what the Torah said, there's a cost. Uh, if you have a quick question, this is just Tikkum. It's yeah. not even, uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, it's already <laughs> okay. Now we had a question as follows. We have to, uh, this is before we continue, we have to remember a question, or maybe we'll even look at it inside. You know, let's look it up inside, go back to the middle of the page. It's very much in the middle of the wide lines. We have to just read four or five lines and then go down back to where we're holding now. Because what we're talking about now relates to that story. Going back to the line, Misha Olav Lashalem, more or less in the middle of the wide lines, 
the wild lands, Mishol of Lashon, Mesiv of Imnuna. Rav Nuna asked the question on Rav. And the question was as follows. Ishbi'al of Chamisha Pe'omim. Remember that? The person is a nag. The person is a nudnik. You know who's a nudnik here? The owner. The owner came once, made the liar, I mean, he didn't know he was a liar, uh, shuvua, take a shuvua, and the person took a shuvua, and he really was nishma in front of Sefer Torah, that what? That he was uh, uh, not stolen, that he was, was lost, never happened, ta -da, da And then again and again and again, five times, again and again and again, the same story was a rerun of the previous, the previous show of what the person, the ganav, the verbal ganav, again and again swears, no, it was lost, it was lost, lost every time he still talk. Ben Bifne Bezdin, Ben Shalo Bifne Bezdin, either was in front of, not in front of Bezdin, the kofar all of, every time he, kofar, every time he denied and denied and denied and denied and denied, chayev al kolachas ve'achas. At the end of the day, if he comes on Friday, after five consecutive, consecutive days of Shvot Sheker, on Friday, he feels the holiness of the Queen Sabbath coming, and feeling of remorse creep through his um, disgusting heart. <laughs> the kids are his moide. On Friday, he admits that he lied all along. He has to bring five choimshim, chamisha <laughs> chomisha He has to bring five chumashim, five extra fifth, which is really a quarter, and five korbanas per shvua. And the chidish is, Rashi says later on, we don't say in shvua chala al shvua. Usually, if I swear once and then I swear again, it's really irrelevant. Here we say, no, every time a new, there's a new chiyuv. So at the end of the day, when, as we say, we say in Hebrew, the story exploded, we say, but the whole thing, you know, the, the, the bubble was blown. Then he has to give one per each shvua. Doma b'shim and matam. Why is that? Ah, it's a repetitive thing. We're, we're still quoting the, the Mishnah. Because every time he could have admitted and he chose not to admit, he chose to do what? He chose not to admit, but to lie. So that's considered as every time, again and again, he stole from you. In other words, every time there's a financial naftamina, there's a financial application here. Because as I told you 10 times, if I tell you a story, not Cyprus, choose another country. Yeah, if I tell you that I was in China for Shabbos, so this past Shabbos yesterday I was in China, so some of you saw me, so that's a problem, yeah? But if I swear to you, I was in China and I was in the Chinese wall in Shabbos and I ran a Seder, Lil Pesach for 10 people, then you'll doubt my sanity maybe or my liability, but I don't have to pay you Choymish. Choymish, you only have to pay with a financial nafkamina from my lie, the Shvua, right? From the Shvua Sheker. So says Rab Shimon, why is that considered to be that every time again and again and again, there's a financial loss? Before, after the first time, it's a done deal, right? As Rabbi Shimon, because every time he could have admitted that he opted to lie, so that's key was every time he stole again and again. Now, Rav Imnuna feels that this is against Rav. Why? Because Rav said that once you lied once and you nishbal sheker once, Beis Din will not take it, right? Will not, will not, even if Adim will come, Beis Din will close the case. So why are you telling me that each and every time he could be moide? Even if Adim come, the Adim won't make a difference. Once case closed, it's case closed. I'm asking you a question, and on Thursday, people are holding very nice in the studio, but expect you to ask the question, which the more asks later in a different way. My question is, what does Rimnuna want from Rav's life, so to speak? The Choyra, yeah, we just said what? That with the person's own Hoido, even Rav agrees you reopen the case. And here in the five times, yeah, we say every time he could have been moid himself, not the Adim came. So what does Rimnuna want? Right? Get the question? The way the Gemara asks the question is, maybe we are wrong. Because Rav Imnuna was a Talmud of Rav, maybe he has inside information that Rav would say, even, even in the case of somebody moid, his own admittance, his own confession, he still doesn't have to pay. Oh, yeah, yeah, against everything we said. The kids are, we're stuck here. Again, let me repeat the question in a simpler form. We said, who's we, Rava, before Shugamar later on, Rava says that, please quiet the phone, just quiet it down and finish, okay? Says Rava like this, Rava says, and we all believe Rava, that in case that the person swore Lashekel, and then he was Moivi himself, he himself admitted, he confessed, then we said, we reopened the case, we believe him and he has to pay. If so, 
What does Rabbi Nuna want from Rav's uh, from Rav? Rav was right. He's saying, "Oh, look, Rav, how do you deal with the case of the five shvuas one after the other?" Yeah, there's even because once he's once he's nishbel once, ah, uh, done deal. Nothing will happen anymore. So the other four times are invalid shvuas. Are uh, as I say in English, empty talk. It's not true. I'm asking, and the Gemara is asking. Not true. Because we said that if the person himself will be murdered, that we will reopen the case. So don't tell me blank statement, like an overall umbrella here, that what, that once in Nishba once, then it's a closed case. That's not true. It's only true in the case when Adim came. But if he himself chooses to admit, as Rab Shimon says, if he will admit, then every time, Rab Shimon is right. Every, even according to Rab, every time on Monday, he could have been he could have decided to be truthful and chose not to. And Allah, even according to Rab, would say that if he chose to be moide, then we would have believed him. So what do you want from Rab? Rab only said that if Edim came, it's a closed case. But if he himself came, it's not a closed case. Again, shall I repeat? Again. Terrific. We are now starting today's shir. The elder said to Ravashi, That's what bothered Ravim Nuna. And now listen to deeper love this beautiful. If you said, not like Rav, we're coming to explain now, my friends, that this is a bit difficult for people to understand. We're not going to come up with answers now. We're going to explain the question of Ravim Nuna and not give the answer. The answer we gave then already. We're going to explain why Ravim Nuna found Rav to be difficult with the case of the five nagging and the five odos. I'm reading again. Iyamad Bishlama, had you said not like Rav, Nishba, that after the Shvua, ki osu Edim Mechaev, if Edim came on Monday after Sunday and they said the guy is, excuse my language, dirty thief, and a liar, and Nishbal Sheker, not like Rav, because Rav said that if Adim come, then we, we chase the Adim away, we say case closed. But had you said that the Adim can come, that means to say, Amatu Lahachi, once we come to that, once we understand that, Mechavina Lekorban, Ashvua Basraisa. We make him Chayv Korban on each and every Shvua down to the fifth one, or maybe the 15th one. Charlie is how many? Why? Because he can admit again and again. Explains Rashi something beautiful. I want to tell you something which is in the Yeshiva Shavelt, a very common uh, in the Yeshiva world. It's very common to make a Hakir investigation. Is something a Siman or a Siba? Is it a Siman? Is it a, an indication or a cause? Up until now, we thought that the Edim are the cause. If Edim come, oh, that causes us to open the case and the Hule. And Rab says, no, they can't press the button. Now we're looking at it as a Siman. <laughs> what do you mean? If, listen to me carefully, if Adim come and we listen to them, that means that this money, those candlesticks, which, which at the end of the day, we know is hiding in his backyard, that money is, I don't have a word in English, is like nitba bull in Beisdin, something that can be retrieved and dealt with, with Beisdin. This is money that in the legal system is owed to the person, even if Adim didn't come. And then if the person admits, he's admitting on money, that is really owed to the person. If I know that in theory, there are no Adim, the two Adim are not around, never were, they went to New Zealand, or maybe they died. But if conceptually, this money can and should be retrieved back by Adim, that means this is kind of money, which is now on the stake in the, in the proper legal system of based in. And if the person swears one, two, three, four, five, once they caught a fish alive, that's it. On each and every one is Chayev. Because it could have been moide on what? On money that's properly owed to the person. It's owed to the candlestick owner. And as such, you have to pay for each and every time you lied and you basically saved him off for money owed to him. Why is the money owed to him by halacha? Because Edim could come and Edim could tell you that it, even if Edim are never there, but it shows you that this kind of money is real money that can be taken by based in. Now you see the other side, which will help you to understand. You know, you see the negative of that. Ella, but, if you say like Rav, he also Edim Potu, 
what you really say, what do you mean when you say this Edim Kam is Potur? That is to say that this money cannot be taken by Bezdin anymore, cannot be dealt with Bezdin anymore. It's outside the legal system. Ah, you're going to say, but you can admit. If you would admit, we'll reopen the case. That's a whole different story. Explains the Gemara. Mi'ika midi, is there something? Mi'ika midi, di lase sadi, masadi bay, potu. Is there anywhere in the world that even if Adim come and testify potu, which means the money is lost, the money is gone. To Adim is the most important, amazing, top one, A1 proof in halacha, says the Rambam and others. If two Adim can't take it out of his pocket, that means it's a lost case in nice English. And we're going to be because he could come and admit and confess again. That's empty talk. At the end of the day now, he never admitted it yet, which means, oh, no question. Oh, no way. Have you ever heard of the term called volunteering? Yes. Very nice, volunteer. Wherever you want, volunteer. Volunteering, by definition, means you're not m'chuyiv to do it. That's what it means in my language. Yeah? You're not m'chuyiv to do it. You're being kind, you're being nice, you're a pensioner, and you have extra time, you want to volunteer. That's all very nice. Can a person commit to chayv you to volunteer? No, that's not voluntary anymore. That's what's happening over here. When we say that the person, according to Rav, if he admits, if he admits to it, then we take the money, that's a voluntary thing. That's not a chayv. Therefore, the money is out of the hands, out of the reach of the person. And then although the person lied and lied and lied and lied and lied five times with Shmua, it's nothing. Because since this money, after time one, the money Be'etzim cannot be retrieved. If he chooses out of his own heart, and his own personal tshuva journey with Hashem and his own nice behavior, he wants to give it back. That doesn't mean that's money that can be properly retrieved by the, retrieved by the system. And Mimele, each and every time, you can't say he could have admitted. Well, he didn't. Once he'll admit, Baruch Rins, once he'll admit, then Basin will go into the picture. Why? Because the Hoido is Mikhaev. If you told the oh, you told the organization, I I'm Mikhaev, I, I, I don't owe you anything, you don't pay me. I'm telling Cooper Shotsnoko, I have free time and events tomorrow. I commit you with my signature at 10 o'clock, I'll come to work and do some computer work for you. Then you have to come. But that's because you decided that. They're not Mikhaev you. You are, and then they can call you and they have time it's against you. Why you but it started on your side. So according to you, Rav, the whole, once a person was Nishba, the only reason why he has to give money when he's Moide, that will only start once he's Moide. But once, as long as he wasn't Moide, he lied once, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven hundred times he lied. That's empty talk because nothing is behind him. Bishlama, one second, one more time, and then I'll hear you. Bishlama, if Adim could come, not like Rav, like others, if Adim could come and Adim would tell me, eh, hey, he's a liar, and I'll be Mikhaivim, even if Adim never came, but that shows you a simon indication, indication that what? That this money can be retrieved in Beisdim. And then each and every time of the five times, I'm trying to retrieve from him money that's owed to me by the proper Choshen Mishpat system. And every time he lied, he's hiding again and again the money from me, taking it further and further. He may live behind at the end of the day, but if it's just his own, it does own voluntary thing, shtriot, then he may he's signing against Rav. That's not good. why should be Chayv Shvua? Because as long as he wasn't Moida, nothing happened. When he'll be Moida, then we'll open the case. As long as he wasn't Moida, nothing really happened. That's Shat. That's why a difficulty. We had an answer for Rav. The really, the Shvua, if you remember, the answer was it's not difficult with Rav, and I'll hear you in a minute. Because why? We say that after. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, what did you want to say? The Shavuah was a class B Shavuah not in Basin. A Shavuah that's not in Basin or Shavuah in Basin but not initiated by them is not a good Shavuah, not good enough. And that's why he doesn't have to, and that's why it's not potter from the money. Yes, very good. Questions, quick ones, yeah. Start and as usual, two dots, it's a new sugya about Toyen Tainus Ganav. Words which I will not translate now, but anyhow, the Gemara is going to explain it better than me. Amar b'chia barab, Amar b'yochanon, Shatta d'shmaya. Amar b'chia barab, Amar b'yochanon. A toyin tain is ganav, a person who claimed that so and so stole it from me. I know that I was supposed to look after your candlesticks. You didn't pay me when you went to China, and the candlesticks were stolen. So what can I do? I'm a shomer chinam. 
the Picodon, and it was a Picodon was given to him. And at the end of the day, found out that he's a liar, even with Adim. Found out that he lied through his teeth. Mishalem Tashlume Kefel. That's a very, very, very basic halacha. It's actually written almost black and white in the Torah, in Parshat Mishpatim. He's got to pay double. The candlesticks are worth 4,000. Okay, give them back, plus another 4,000. Very nice, one person. Let's say we're not talking about candlesticks, but we're talking about two kinds of animals, either a show or se, and he either slaughtered them or he sold them. Who? The one who lied. He didn't never stole physically, but in his backyard, there's an animal bleeping away. Yeah, and what? And he says, no, 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 he was stolen. Then, and then he shechted it. But the Edim who can testify that eventually, after the Shavua, he made a false Shavua and says, your sheep has never, oh no, it's been by me. Oh, no, 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 actually not, no, no. The animal, the sheep was stolen from me last night. There was a thief stolen. Oh, 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 do you know? And what? And then he, he was come out to be a liar. And then he shechted the sheep and Edim saw it. He has to pay how much? Four. And if it was a cow, five. Why? Why is that? He didn't really steal it. He's a verbal thief. Says, Since a thief pays the Shlomi Kefel, of course. The real physical Ganev pays Kefel. And the verbal Ganev, the Tantanis Ganev, also pays Kefel. So we see that the good friends, they seem to be working. Uh, there's a parallel between them. Ma Ganev Shlomi Shalom Kefel. If Ganev pays Kefel in a regular case, and also if he stole, if he slaughtered or sold on, he has to pay four or five. I've turned on his Ganev if he got on. So to turn on his Ganev in a Picodon is like his copycat. Shumashalim, Tashlumi Kefel, he pays Kefel. Yes, that's for sure. That's in the Torah. Oh, here comes the missing link. Now we say, So too, yeah. We have point, yeah, A equals B and C equals D. In other words, he also has to pay a of Hamisha. Meaning, what we're trying to prove here is the fact that the Torah is God, because that's not written in the Bible. It doesn't say outright in the Torah that the verbal liar who eventually shechted the sheep has to pay for. We don't say that, but it makes sense. In other words, it's a copycat of the Ganav, just like the Ganav has to pay what? Or Bob Hamisha. So to the Torah is God, that's his you know, first cousin, so to speak. Yeah, that's his clone, almost. He also has to pay up four and five in case he shechted. That's so nice, such a nice... It's not a brysa, by the way. It's very brysa style. I guess there's Rabbi Yochanan lived in Israel. So Rabbi Yochanan spoke in uh, Losh Nekodesh. But this is a statement of Rabbi Yochanan, the Moira. And the Gemara is going to challenge that statement. Back the Gemara, it's a nice Zvara. You're comparing Ganev to Tointan is Ganev. You want to tell me anything that happens to Ganev also happens to Tointan is Ganev Therefore, the Tantan is Ganav also, if he physically shechted, has to pay four or five. That's nice, but Reg the Gemara line starts with the Chamisha. Yeah, we're by five to six lines about from the bottom of the narrow lines. We found that Ganav is more severe than Tantan is Ganav in one aspect. You tell me, people. Let's say a Ganav stole and then he was caught with Adim and he stole, and we know that he stole. And he said, I didn't steal. But he did not make a shvua about stealing. Is he chayb kefal without shvua? Yes. A ganav, yes. A ganav has to pay kefal for the act of gneva. Nothing to do with shvua. And I'm reading it inside. Look inside the Gemara. Ma'al a ganav shikin shalom tush nama kefal. Shaloi, geidim, geidim, yeah. Shaloi b'shvua. No shvua. There was no shvua, but the ganav has to pay kefal. Edim came, he has to pay kefal without shvua. As opposed to Toimer but Toyntan is Ganev, Shemeshal Matushmu Mekefel, Ella Beshavua. Ah, Toyntan is Ganev is less severe, is more lenient. You know why? Or we're more lenient with him. Let's say Toyntan is Ganev says, I'm telling you, listen carefully to more. I'm telling you with all honesty, <laughs> really, hi, that yesterday when I came back from China, uh huh, there was a Ganev that stole it from me. Is he have to pay Kefel? No. Why? Because in the Shavua. Even though it declares with all honesty, as long as the toy in time is gone, if the verbal thief is only high with his niche, but unfortunately, the Torah only so now the toy time is gonna be more lenient for a gun. One second for a gun, if you have to tick one box out of two, once you're in stage one, oh, you stole, oh, that's it, you have to pay careful. 
whether or not you're Nishba or I'm listening to you, you stole Kefal. The Taintan is gonna be being more lenient. If you verbally stole and you start cooking up lies and tall tales, and you say, oh yeah, there was a gun of, as long as you don't go to stage two, stage B and make Shavua your potter. So therefore you can't automatically assume that anything that happens to Ganav also happens to Tantan is Ganav. Just like we saw that Ganav is more severe, the, the physical Ganav, when Mikhail Ketel straight away without Shavua, maybe too he has to pay four and five when he slaughtered it or sold it, but maybe Tantan is Ganav, maybe doesn't have to pay if he stole, if he slaughtered on, we don't know. The not such him is twins. A Ganav is more homer. So you can't automatically assume that just like there's Tvich Mechir 4 5 by Ganav, is also Tvich Mechir 4 5, but Tontan is Ganav, they're not exactly the same, which makes sense because Tontan is Ganav is verbal, he's not Mamish doing a Maisa, not that he's a nice guy. So maybe it's not the same, maybe. The halacha will be not like that, maybe. Okay? Yeah. Very nice. In other words, how do we know that, yeah, that's for sure what you're saying. The question is, we also add on top of that, that a Tointan is Ganav, who swore and lied in his oath. And he said, a Ganav came to me, he has to pay Kefal. If later on, he does Tzvicha or Mechira, slaughtering or selling, he has to pay extra four or five, extra two or three, to get to four or five. How do we know that? That's the question. Why is Ganav case, case, they don't say anything? Why does it? Also, uh, that at the end of the day, he was found to be lying. No, a Tantan has got his only bishop. No, no, no. Again, it's no, 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 Amri answers the Gemara. It's as far as the cause of Amri answers the Gemara. Ekesh, what's a Hekesh? Hekesh means when two psukim or two paragraphs are in our scrolls juxtaposed with each other. It's Hekesh, which means that really, if you look in the Torah, if you remember from Meruba, there are two parshas to describe what seems to be like a Ganev or a person who speaks about theft. It's not so clear. And both times it says you pay Kefal. We learned that one parsha talks about the physical Ganev and the other one is the verbal Ganev B'Shvua. And one is compared to the other, not because we think they're the same and they're similar because I decided it or even Rabbi Yochanan. It's a Hekesh, Lakish, it's Tanakh. The one next to the other, the end Shiva Nalakesha, Hekish is something you don't ask about. Hekish is from Hashem. Hekish is one of the, you know, one of the, it's not you know, Midas, by the way, but it's one of the one of the oral laws that you listen to, the oral ways of learning the Torah. And we know that that's true, and that's about it. And we may like, even though I would question the fact that Ghana turned on is Ghana are not the same logically. Why? Because the Ghana is more severe than turned on is Ghana, but there's a Hekish. Ekesh means whatever applies to A applies to B. If a Ganev is a Bova Chamisha, Tantan is Ganev also is a Bova Chamisha, even though Tantan is Ganev is less severe. Break the Gemara, that's very nice. Hanicha, that's okay. Laman de Omer Chad de Ganev, the Chad de Tantan is Ganev, Shapir. According to Man de Omer, if you remember the Sugi and Merube, if one Man de Omer learned the Psukim, the one Pasuk talks about Ganev, the other Pasuk about the Tantan is Ganev, that's very nice. One next to the other is Hekish. Whatever applies to Ganev applies to Toyin. Beautiful. El Alemandomer Hai Imimotze Aganev. Im Loimotze. There is a Mandomer that says that both parshas in the Torah, if the Ganev is found or not found, Tervayu Betoyin Tan is Ganev. Yeah. In other words, there is in first wide line. There is an opinion that says that both parshas that we talk about, they both talk about Toyin Tan is Ganev, and Ganev himself is learned from a different parsha. Michael and Meymar, there's no Hekesh. <laughs> if both parshas talk about Tointan is Ganev, then there is no, and Ganev is talk, spoken about in a whole different place, then what's the, what's, what, there is no Hekesh anymore. So how, what's your source to be so certain, so sure that Ganev and Tointan is Ganev are the same? Don't pull the Hekesh card, because according to this opinion, there is no Hekesh. The two parshas are not talking about Ganev and Tointan. Amri answers a more simple answer. Ganev Ha Ganev, because the letter Hey is an extra letter that's added to the parsha over there. Ha Ganev, the letter Ha Ganev is the Hey comes to add to the Tointan is Ganev, also a Ganev. Very very easy. In other words, really the parsha talks about Tointan is Ganev. 
the letter hey comes to tell you that Ganev is alluded to, Ganev is hinted to, and anything that happens to turn down as Ganev happens to Ganev and vice versa. All very nice. Mazel Tov. We found a source, Ganev a Ganev or Hekesh. We found a source to tell me what? To tell me one clear thing. Just like a Ganev, the real physical Ganev who came in the middle of the night, he has to pay in case that he slaughtered it four or five. So too, Mr. Feintan is Ganev. He's a white collar guy who speaks nicely and he has silver tongue and a sheker di teshvua. Also, in case he's caught and then he slaughtered it physically, he has to pay four or five. Very interesting. Abhiya Barabba, who quoted Rabbi Yochanan, is questioning Rabbi Yochanan. He quoted him and then he's asking, Hey, Rabbi Yochanan, look, I have a question on what you told me. What's the question? Says the says the Mishnah, Heichan Shoiri. Where is my show? Where's my show? Nignav, I'm so sorry you were stolen. I make you take a shvua. I make you take a shvua. Are you sure? Yeah, shvua. Domar Omein. Cold bloodedly, he nishbal a sheker. Omein, yeah, I swear that he was stolen from me. The Edim Edim also shachol. Oi, oi, no, 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 no. Oi, but boy. Edim came. And they testified that two days later, yeah, but be- that at some point, Shacholoi, before he even was taken to court or anything, he ate physically, he ate the, the, the sheep. He ate the animal or the show. He ate the bull. Now, is the person religious? The Tontan is gonna, the one who swore the Sheker? Yes, of course. Does he eat only Badats? Only Badats say the Haredis. It's okay to lie in Nishbal Sheker, but to eat? Ah, ah. Only the best of Sherim. Only Badats, not even Mahfoud, not even Ravlando or Rubin. Very Mahmir with the Sherim. Eating treif wouldn't come up. What's the Sharmarim? Only Nishbal Sheker is okay. Avada, money, there's no such thing as Chosh and Mishpat. We assume that the person keeps kosher. One second, please. And the Adim testified that he slaughtered the animal. And then, you know, because the Adim came and called his bluff, his shalom teshlume kefel. Oh, one second, the parents. He has to pay careful because he was caught lying by Adim. Says the turn time is gone. Hey, excuse me. I thought, no, that in Jewish law, in order to eat kosher meat, you have to shecht it. No, isn't such a thing. Ah, Frank the Gemara. The ha over here, something doesn't work right in the story. The EF shall kazais bosa below shchita. Even if you want to eat one tiny bit of bosa, one kazais, one matchbox size or 28 grams of bosa, you have to have shchita. So we assume that the person keeps kosher, the one who's nishbal sheker, and yet v'ktan v'shalom tashlume kefel. The words say he has to pay kefel. Tashlume kefel in, tashlume arbo b'chemish aloi. He only has to pay kefel, and that's four and five, right? It sounds like even though he shechted the animal, shechita, that v'cha mechira, he still stays with the kefel. Why? He should have said, acholoi, he has to pay four or five. Five in this case, because it's a bull. And why don't we say that? He has to pay careful. According to you, Rav, that's wrong. And maybe you're not Rav, Rabbi Yochanan. Maybe you're Rabbi Yochanan, maybe you're wrong. Maybe really you have to pay, you do not have to pay four and five, but only careful even after you shechted, because you're not a thief, just to turn on his gun, question mark, yes? Okay, so we see if he ate, we assume he ate kosher. If he ate kosher, he shechted. And even after shechting, we still stick to good old kefal. Why? It has to be five already, not two, according to Rabbi Yochanan. Answers the Gemara, very, very sad. The person is slowly off the derching over here. And you know the story is? Uh oh. The person after ganving, what did he do? He shot it on the head, see Mackenzie style, or he banged it with an axe. He ate nevela. So eating nevela does not make you pay four or five. Absolutely, a million percent. We saw it time and again, again, and again in the Ruba. Eating the Vela not only kosher shchita. Kosher shchita is what gets you to pay our Baba Hamisha. Only if you sell it properly or if you shecht it properly within the parameters of halaha, then you have to pay our Baba Hamisha. Otherwise, no. And here the guy unfortunately banged it on the head or waited till he died. He ate the Vela. I don't say trait because the Vela and Chef are not the same. He ate b'star nevela, rachmalon litzlon, 
and therefore he does not have to pay four and five. But I, Rabbi Yochanan, I stick to my guns. Had the Anachinam shechted it properly with the Khalif of the Basin, the Badatsa of Nachbud, of course he would have to pay four and five because the Shechted Shito Tzvicho Mechira. That's the end of the answer. Rag the Gemara, is that the only answer you can provide that the person did that? The Lish Nilei, why couldn't Rabbi Yochanan answer him, Kigon Shacholot Treifa? Why won't you answer Acholot Treifa? What's the difference between Nevela and Treifa? Treifa means there was kosher Shechita. Let's be mechadish. Let's maximize the chiddush. You tell me, people. Let's say the person shechted properly. All chumras in the durm of shechita. The chalif was very, very sharp. No agroma, no ikur, no nechira. Everything was very good. No drosto, not achlodo. Ter perfect shechita. He shechted, and then the animal we saw had five heavy smoker, had five uh, big holes in the in the lungs, yeah, and one in the brains. So what is the animal trefa? Was the shechita per se good? Yes. Was the shechita functional and helpful? No. Uh -huh. So maybe you can answer even bigger chiddush that the person shechted it very nice with the brocha of the chavona. The ganiv is a very big shoichet, yeah, a very very mahadar yerushalayim. And then he found trefa, and even then he does not have to pay baba chamisha because the shechita never helped him. And we know from the mishnayos previously that Rabbi Shimon said. That a shechita that doesn't really get you to eat the animal, even if it was good shechita per se, is not shechita that's mechayv your baba chamisha. So why don't you answer bigger chiddush? Says the Gemara, you know why? Because I don't believe this chiddush. Rabbi Meir, because Rabbi Yechonon follows the opinion of Rabbi Meir. What did Rabbi Meir say? The Omer shechita shein eruya shma shechita. Rabbi Meir is more machmir. Rabbi Meir says even if you shecht good shechita, but ain't a ruya, meaning. A shechita that per se is good shechita, the sakin was good and the action was good, but there's a side problem that the animal was deathly ill, and that's why you don't eat it, it's still called shechita to be mechaiv, you four and five. That's what the only way he could answer is by saying that he banged it on the head, because according to him, any shechita is a good shechita for paying above a chamisha, even if you didn't get to eat from it at the end. Break the Gemara, the Lishnele, let's answer something more creative and less problematic halachically, Ben Pekua is the son of a Pekua, which means an animal was heavily pregnant, about to give birth, but didn't yet give birth. And somebody shechted it, shechted it before giving birth. And then the animal inside, the, the ba unborn baby was found alive inside. Do you have to shecht it? No. Even five years later, it's running around. It's not Chav Shechita. You can shoot it, you know, to Mackenzie style and eat it. Aloha Lomaisa. And why the bent kua? Yeah, it was completely inside the stomach at the time of shechita. You can take the bent kua and bang it on the head and eat it. Oh, so now you let's say a person stole, not the mother. It was the mother was shechted. There is a boy, not a boy. <laughs> There's a calf or a kid running around, and everybody knows he's a bent kua. Yeah, on it says BP on his back. You know, like uh, yeah, <laughs> bent kua. And the bent kua, everybody knows, needs no shechita. Now a Ganev came, not a Ganev, excuse me, a Tointine is Ganev lied that the Ben Kua was stolen from him. He lied, he was caught, and he has to pay Kepo. Then he doesn't have to shecht it. Then he doesn't have to shecht it. And that's why, even if he shecht it, it doesn't make a difference. There's never four and five. The Shechita doesn't apply to Ben Kua. We're looking basically for a case in which you did eat it, because the Bracha says, Acholoi. You ate it, but you don't need to do Shechita. Here we are, Ben Kua. You ate it. You know you don't have to pay four and five because there is no shechita. You're allowed to. You're not the McKenzie. The guy is okay, kosher wise. He's a liar, but kosher wise, he's right for shooting him in the head, and that's not called trade for an avela. It's allowed. It's ben pua. And says Gemara again, Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yechonon was a big supporter of Rabbi Meir. What did Rabbi Meir say? Omar ben pua ton shechita. Rabbi Meir argues on what we know lalo, huh? And he says we're talking here about ben pua would not help you. Because he believes Ben Kua also requires Shita. Interesting. We have a reference in the Torah, Ba Behema. Polish of Ba Behema Tochelu. You're allowed to eat whatever is in the Behema. So in our school, they would translate and they write amongst the Behemas, within the Behemas. But the Drosh is in the Behema. <laughs> whatever is inside the Behema, you can eat Ben Kua. Rabbi Meir didn't believe that Drosh, and Rabbi Meir says no. Rabbi Meir says even Ben Kua requires Shita. So even if he says the Ben Kua, they won't help. So you must say that he ate it, Trave. He needs shechita, and he banged it on the hand. That's called nevela. 
Bela is not Chavar Bava Chamisha. Break the Gemara a third time. The Lishni Lay, I have other suggestions. But again, what's the Lishni Lishni all the time? We're looking for alternative answers. How can a person eat the behemoth who's out being chayv to pay above a chamisha? Yeah, assuming he's keeping kosher and does do shechita. And we said, no, ye treif, we're trying to make him sound a bit better like he keeps kosher. Why can't you answer a case we saw before? Let's say that uh, that verbal ganav, what's the story with him? Lied. Nishbal Sheker, then they Omad Bedin, they tried him, he was on trial, the Omuloi, and they told the liar, the Sheker, Set Ten Loi, go out now, get the final, final sack, and give him the Kefel, give him the, the back, the animal, well, if it's still alive or its value, and Kefel and give him. And then he, sh- no, Scott, he was alive, he was alive, he was alive, give him back the animal with Kefel right now. Final psak of Ezek, with a policeman around you. And then he shechted it. Then he does not have to pay a barba chamisha. You know why? Rove, says Rav as follows. You guys going to tell me why. Said ten loy, if Bezdin said to the Ganev, not Ganev, to the Torintan is Ganev, go out and give him. If after the final, final psak, everybody knows that he owes him the animal. Based he knows it, and to make it a little bit more flowery and more 2022, all the newspapers know it, and all the websites, and everybody knows that he now has to give back the Shepsale of someone. Then he bluntly went ahead and he shechted it with everybody knows he shechted it. You, uh, let's now stop for a second. I want you guys to tell me the following. Yeah, to answer my question. If a person is a very direct, blunt, Chutzpadike, Gazla, not Ganav. Gazla, he comes to you in the middle of the street and he's the neighborhood thug. Everyone's scared of him. And he says, give me your car right now or else you're dead meat. And everybody knows his face. He's declared. He's a declared guy. He's a declared Gazla. He takes other people's money with no remorse. That's how his mommy raised him. Does he have to pay Kefal or Baba Misha? Yes or no? No. Why not? He's a bad guy. Very good. The Gazlan is not a nice guy, but at least he does not put Hashem <laughs> less than people. Yeah, in the lower pedestal. Yeah. The Gazlan is just a blonde guy, he's not scared of anybody. The Ganav steals when nobody sees him. Oh, nobody sees you? I thought Hashem sees you. That's a Gaz Ganav has to pay more. Oh, listen to this guy. Listen to this. A Titan is Ganav started off as a Ganav. He believes nobody knows and he doesn't care about Hashem. Once his story is out in the open and Basin says you gotta pay him. And now he's acting bluntly and he's shechting it, knowing that everybody knows and no question belongs to the other guy. He became a goslin. Because now he's open, he's overt. He's out of the, huh, yeah, that's the story. Yeah, he's out of the closet. The Mimela, look at the Gemara. My time, Kevin the Paschal Emil said was a psak halocho. This, no question anymore. AD improves, hidden cameras. Everybody knows that the Shepsa belongs to the victim and not to you. He's in the open, he's overt. He mainly is a Gazlan. The Gazlan, the He doesn't have to pay four and five. That's a brilliant answer. Why don't you answer that? You know why he doesn't have to pay for Chamisha? Because at the time of the Shechita, which is post Sak based in, and all the websites, and all the news, and everybody knows that he's a God of, and he knows, he knows everybody knows, he's now acting out of, you know, in your face kind of thing. Dafkanik. So he does not have to pay four and five because of that. Continues now the Mishnah, or Bryce, I think, however, that's just, now you can put that in parentheses, but we still have to read it. On the side, we say, let's say Basin gave a psak, which is not the final, final psak. They put down the gavel and said, you have to give him. But as Baruch said, it's still an open case. As far as we can see now, you have to give him the, the Bema. Then he goes out of base and he tells all the news media, you know, all the, no, 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 I have other ADM, ah, based in, ah, ah, there is still a way to go. He's still, you know, fidgeting, trying to find his way out. And then then he slaughtered it, Chayev. Then he still has to give him four and five knas. Why? My time at Kolkama de Milsa. As long as it's not the final, final, final psak, ah, there's a second hearing, maybe another base, and then, ah, Akati Ganevu. 
he's still a Ganav because he says, no, I'm not bluntly shechting someone else's animal. I'm shechting mine. He's still playing the game. He's still playing the game, even though people know, but he says, no, he still has his circle of friends who believe in Bechule, his wife, his children. Eh, he's still, you know, within the, I'm okay with people and not okay with Hashem. So he's still a Ganav. But Lamai said, the question remains a question. Why? Oh, excuse me. I One second. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the question is, yeah, okay. Why don't we say to Kitzer, we're looking for a case of a tiny, tiny Ganav that really does shechted and does not have to pair Bava Chamisha. Why do you have to tell me that he banged him on the head and make him look so bad? You could tell me that he, Hoshut, was got a psak halach, a final, final red letter in the post box and policemen coming. You had to give the animal and then he shechted it openly. Bachis, so then a gazlan. That's why he doesn't have to pay four and five. What do you have? Even he shechted it on the mahadrin, and mahadrin. What do you have to say? Banged it on the head of Vela. Answers the Gemara, her simple answer. According to you, you keep attacking me all the time. Why didn't you answer this? Why didn't you answer that? You know, according to you, I'll challenge you also. I could also find another creative answer of a person who shechts and doesn't have to pay four and five. You know who that is? The Shutaf, a Shutaf, you know, what kind of Shutaf, a Shane Shutaf. There were two thieves who stole together. Yeah, we saw it previously. They shoot him. Yeah, they stole together partners in crime. Yeah, good partners. Uh, and now one of them, Shetombach Shalom Edas Chaveroi, one of the Ganovim shechted <laughs> without the knowledge of his co ganav He does not have to pay four and five. Why not? Because we say in the postuk, it says, uh, um, no, it says in the postuk, Chamisha Veloi Chamisha Chatzoi Boker. Chamisha boko, five cows, and not five halves of cow. Because Lamaisa, if the two Ganovim, yeah, Max and Moritz, and Max is, and they stole together, and Max is the one who shechted, and Moritz did not shecht, Moritz, in that respect, at least, is innocent. Max is acting uh, as if he's the only owner, he is the only guy, guy, yeah? So now we tell Max, Max is daughter from shechting the half. If there's a cost of, if you check Ki'ilu, the half that belongs, not belongs, yeah? This sort of, yeah, the Kenyan Gneva. And now you check that your half, your potter. Ah, you check that from Moritz. That, go and have a Chagan of potter, my brother, Chamisha. What he stole from Reuben, his potter, it's only half. What he stole from his partner by checking it, your potter, if you're going it from a gun, your potter, my brother, Chamisha. In any event, if you want to come out with more flowery, creative cases, I have other cases where a person checks. It doesn't have to pay four and five. Ella, so I'll give you one simple answer that will help both of us. Chadi, Mitati, Betloso, no cut. Very simple. Sometimes we only give one answer out of two or three. In other words, leave me alone. Don't tell me he could have answered, should have answered. I could have, should have. I didn't. I could have answered three different reasons. I'm not trying to impress anyone with my knowledge. And therefore, he answered, Rabbi Yochanan answered one answer out of many. And he chose to answer that the guy have actually eats straight for maybe to show us how bad the Gneva is. I don't know. But he could have answered other answers that it's a shoot off. He could have answered other things. Yeah, but the Maisa, he said it was already a uh, din. He could have. He chose, he opted to answer one answer out of many. At the end of the day, yeah, he just won. Yeah, but Rabbi Echnan sticks to his gun. No, the whole word is Rabbi Echnan wants to stick to his gun. That a joint and his Ganev conceptually is Chavra Bava Chamisha. Ah, here we saw that he's not. That's because of the side reason. I'd like to continue the two minutes we have because we have another statement, which will unfortunately not see much today, but at least this, the beginning of it. That's the second statement out of three statements of Rabbi Chia Baraba and Rabbi Yochanan regarding joint and his Ganev. A joint and his Ganev, the Aveda, very confusing word. You know what I mean? Joint and the Aveda, very simple. The person found an object, like you thought or thought borrowed. Up until now, we spoke about a person who was deposited money, cow, sheep, or candlesticks into his trustworthy <coughs> hands, yeah? And then he lied about it. What happens if a person finds an evade in the street? He starts off good, such a tragic story. He started off good, and he wanted to really give back the cow or the candlesticks, the computer, the car, to the person. And eventually, the answer, Hara, 
took the best of him. And you know what happened? The person came out to the door and said, you know, people say you found my object. Where's my object that you found? Yeah, I found your object, but I'm so sorry. It was stolen. Oh, it broke my heart. And he lied, Shekhar, Shvua, everything. So it came to his hands organically, not through Picot, and he found it. But the end of the story is that he lies, like all other liars, and his nishba that was stolen from him, the shalim to shlume kefel, he still has to pay kefel, because my time, and why is that? It says, al kol aveda, Hashem accused that, al kol aveda. One of the items, one of the cases described in the Torah of a person who lies and has to pay kefel because of Tantan is Ganev, is also a person who talks about an aveda. It's a lost item. He admits he found it last week, and he lies that it was stolen from him. So Mimele has to pay careful like any regular Tantan is Ganev. We'll just see the question and tomorrow the answer. Another question on Rabbi Bar Abba. The question is like this. Ki iten ish. It says if a man gives items, kesef kelim, money or objects to his friend, what does a man exclude? Not a woman. Men and women are very equal when it, when it comes to monetary laws. A man is opposed to a cotton. If a boy under bar mitzvah gave you his 4,000 shekels candlesticks to look after, then what? Says the Brisa, ain't the sinas cotton klum. And the cotton then says, what, that you, where, where, where are my candlesticks that I gave you? And the man says nothing. The man lies. The man did get candlesticks from the cotton, which he shouldn't have. That's not allowed. And he lies about it, that it was stolen. We say the man does not have to pay careful. The current time is gone when it comes to cotton, does not have to pay anything. And that will cause us a problem regarding the statement we just saw, as we'll see tomorrow. Thank you very much. It doesn't, it doesn't pay knas. He has to return the, the thing, but the knas, it doesn't have to pay. As we'll say, thank you, Jeff, you're right. Thank you very much. The,